Hello there, Mr. Wilson here again for what is a brand new paper series on the channel. Um, this is the June 2018 AQA Further Maths uh, Paper 2. Now, if you look on the channel, I've already done the Paper 1, the non-calculator paper. Um, so this is an opportunity now to look through the Calculator Paper 2. Now, even though this is an old spec paper, this is not the current specification that, that the uh, AQA use for Further Maths. I still think it offers a lot of great practice and because there are not a lot of papers, past papers for the GCSE further maths, I think really is to, you know, just for that extra practice on some really difficult and also very interesting um, GCSE maths uh, questions, it is, I think, important to look at these uh, past papers, even though they might not be the current spec, just for those ideas, just to really get the cogs turning in the brain. Um, and there are a lot of comparisons between the topics with a few little tweaks obviously. So let's jump straight into the paper then with question one. Oh, yeah, the formula sheet first, then question one. So let me, um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so that we can see these questions a bit better. There we go. So the nth term of a sequence is 1420 take away 5n over 1420 plus 5n. Work out the position of the nth term that has a value of 0. Well, if it has a value of 0, this is equal to the value of 0, then 1420 take away 5n over 1420 plus 5n is equal to 0. Now, if a fraction is equal to 0, that implies that the numerator must equal 0 because that is the only way you can get 0 in a fraction. So that must mean that 5n is equal to 1,420, uh, 1, so then n must equal 800 and... Four, no, two, uh, 284, that's what I was meant to put, 284. There we go. You can just type it on the calculator, 1,420. Uh, 1,420 divided by 5, it'll tell you it's 284. I was trying to do it in my head, and that is not a clever decision in a calculator paper. Write down the limiting values n tends to infinity. Now, this is a, a classic question for a GCSE further maths, where they ask you about, as n tends to infinity, what's going to happen? Now, if you've got this uh, sequence here, let me just write it out. 1, 4, 20, uh, take away 5n over 1, 4, 20 plus 5n. Well, what you can actually do here, right, and this is quite a, a high-level idea behind um, how this sort of idea works, right? What you could do is divide every single term by n, right? So you get 1,420 over n, take away 5, over 1,420 over n, plus 5. Now you might turn around and say, why the hell did we do that, right? What was the point in that? Because really we've got something that looks more complicated than the original. However, the limit as n tends to infinity for this term here and this term here, if you divide by a really large number, I mean a really, really large number, the answer gets smaller. And in actual fact, when you divide by infinity, you're not technically dividing by infinity because infinity is not a number, but I'm just going to sort of phrase it in that way. When you divide by infinity, then this whole fraction actually goes to zero, and so does this one. So what you are left with is negative 5 over 5, which is equal to negative 1. So the limiting value as n tends to infinity is negative 1. Now this technique of dividing, you divide by the highest power of n, and uh, whatever you're left with, that basically tells you what the limited value is. That technique is very common at A-level. That's quite a common A-level technique, especially A-level further maths, when you look at quite complicated sequences um, and limiting values. It's um, the standard technique to do this. There is an alternative way of doing this question, which is you look at what part of the expression has the most effect as n tends to infinity. Well, the thing that's going to have the most effect is the things that have n in, right? Because these, you know, if you have a very, 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 very large number and you add 1,420, that's not going to have any effect whatsoever, pretty much, on the, the limiting value. So it's going to be the term that has n in. That's another way of thinking about it. But 
I don't tend to use that way. I tend to use the divide by, divide every term by n method uh, for this. Okay, let's move on to question two. P is negative three, negative ten, and Q is A B. A point on a straight line with gradient of twelve. Work out one possible pair of integer values for A and B. Okay, so well, there are actually going to be infinitely many values for A and B, right? Because Q could be any point on the line, as long as it is a line with gradient of 12. So, basically, right, you've got a point P here, and it's going to have negative 3 and negative 10, right? And Q has to be uh, AB, and A and B have to be positive, but they have to be integers. Now, there are a few ways you could go about this. Because you know that the gradient is 12, Right, that means for every one step to the right you go, you go up 12. Right, that's what a gradient of 12 means. So if you are on negative 3, if you go across 4, right, to positive 1 on the uh, x axis, well, then you have to go up 48 because the line is a gradient of 12. Well, from negative 10 up 48 is 38. So that means Q could have coordinates 1, 38, and that would be straight away a correct answer. Now that means that you could also have any answer where you add on 1 to the x-coordinate and add 12 onto the, the y-coordinate. That would also be a correct answer. So for example, you could have uh, 2 and 50, you could have 3 and 62, and 4 and 74, and so on. Right? As long as you add 1 to the x-coordinate and 12 to the y-coordinate you'll get a correct answer. So there are loads of ways of doing this. I just thought that was the nicest way because really if you just understand what the gradient means, it sort of unlocks this, this sort of whole question for you. Right then. Is that the... Yep, yeah, so I'm going to put in A is 1 and B is 38. And again, there are infinitely many solutions. So don't think that you have to have the same as me. Okay, three is equal, uh, 3. P is equal to m plus 2 over m squared plus 1. Work out the value of p when m is negative 5.5. Well, this is just a substitution, right? So p is equal to negative 5.5 plus 2 over brackets negative 5.5 squared plus 1. The reason why I put the negative 5.5 in brackets when I type it in my calculator is because if you don't, the calculator will do the um, squaring wrong. What it will do is it will try to do 5.5 squared, because it does the order of operations, then it'll put the negative in front. But that's not what you want it to do. You want it to square negative 5.5. So you have to put that in brackets. Add the 1. And I believe you get, as a fraction, negative 14 over 125. And as a decimal, that is negative 0 0.112. So just a substitution for one mark. You've got a calculator, so hopefully not too strenuous. It's just about... Just making sure we type in this in brackets. That is, I guess, the, the only thing that really could go wrong. Work out the value of m when p is 2. Okay, so when p is 2, 2 is equal to m plus 2 over m squared plus 1. And then we, both, we need to get rid of this divide by m squared plus 1. So we times by m squared plus 1. So we get 2m squared plus 2 is equal to m plus 2. Well, we can subtract 2 from both sides. So we get 2m squared is equal to m. Or in other words, 2m squared take away m is equal to 0. Then we factorise. So m brackets 2m m minus 1 is equal to 0. So either this thing is equal to 0, or this thing is equal to 0. Now if 2m minus 1 is equal to 0 then m must be a half, or 0 0.5, and then m is 0 is the other one. That's why it says work out the values, plural. So m is 0, or m is equal to 0 0.5. So those are going to be our, our two solutions um, in this case. Okay, I think we probably have time for one more. So, a, b, c, d are points on a circle with centre 0. And we've got 
this angle labelled x, this one w, this one y. Which statement is correct? Tick one box. x plus y is equal to 180 and w is equal to 2x. x plus y is equal to 180 and x is equal to 2w. x equals y and w is equal to 2x. x equals y and x equal to 2w. Well, first thing to note is that there's a couple of key rules happening here. First of all, the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. That's, it. That's obviously the first key idea here. So that means if you multiply this one by 2, you get the same as W. This is where some people get confused. They think, oh, the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference, so I need to times that by 2. That's not the case. It's already saying that's twice as big. So to make them equal to each other, you have to multiply the other one by 2 to make them the same. So in other words, 2x is equal to W, right? That's the key idea. So 2x is equal to W, so it's either going to be this option here, or it's going to be uh, 2x is equal to W, this option here. Right? Those are going to be the two options. So we can already exclude this one and this one. So we now need to just look at x and y and see what kind of link those two angles have to each other. And from there, we'll hopefully, we can uh, work out what it is. So let's have a look then. Well, if this angle is y, then this angle here must be 180 take away y, because angles on a straight line add to 180. But then here, these two angles are opposite in a cyclic quadrilateral, so they must add to 180. So 180 take away y plus x is equal to 180. So that means you can subtract x 180 from both sides. So you get negative y is equal to x. Uh, sorry, negative y pl uh, plus x is equal to 0, taking 180 off both sides. So x is equal to y, right, through the rearrangement. So therefore, the, the only option has got to be that third one there. x equal to y and w is equal to 2x. So a really nice question there, actually. I didn't really expect a multiple choice question for the fourth question in the paper. But it's just testing to see whether you understand uh, circle theorems in using algebra basically um, and making sure that we um, sort of not misconstruing the um, the circle theorems and getting them the wrong way around or thinking of them in the in the wrong way okay then I'll wrap it up there for this part if you've enjoyed this video then definitely check out all the other videos that are, are on the channel um, well over 200 videos now and I've even got like a checklist I'm trying to go through all the uh, past papers it's going to take me a, a long time but um, I'm sort of committed to it now, so uh, yeah, that's why I'm trying to tick all of these off. So if, like I said, you've enjoyed this video, just share it around with other people who you think it might be useful with. I really enjoy further maths. It's one of my favourite uh, qualifications to teach and to, to talk about. And um, all I want to say is thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.